Welcome back to the channel. Today we actually have a two for one deal. We are going to be prepping two cars for paint. Uh, since Paul is not here, he won't be back till Monday. I think we can uh, get these cars prepped uh, and ready for paint. That way when he comes in on Monday, you know, we're gonna have him loaded up for the work. Uh, the cars that I'm talking about is of course the E92, which is behind me. You guys know we put the quarter panel on this car and also the orange Mustang, which is still inside the shop. We've got that thing in primer. It needs a little bit more primer, but I think we'll take care of that today as well. So hopefully we can get both these cars ready for paint. That way when Paul comes in on Monday, he can paint possibly the, mu the Mustang first since it was here first. And then the E92 hopefully on Tuesday. Nah, let's put this thing in the booth. You today. want this thing to go in the booth first? Today. I, I mean, yeah, I am super excited. And look guys, I actually got my mirror too. You guys don't even know how happy I am with the condition of this mirror. I uh, paid a lot of money for this mirror uh, because they're super expensive and they're hard to find. So like when you go on eBay, they're all outrageously overpriced and it came in in super good shape. So big shout out to the eBay seller who sold this to me. I don't know who you are, but thank you. Uh, we'll very this. nice mirror. What's that boss? Did you just buy those? Yeah. Hey, these are nice. You can strike these with a hammer. Yeah. Where That's you it. buy? Oh, tractor supply. Tractor supply. Man's a farm. He knows the secret hookups. He knows the secret hookups. All right. And uh, one thing I'm on the fence about is this fender on this side. Uh, you can see we've got we've got plenty of blend room on the hood so it's, we only primed it here but right here where the bumper meets the fender i'm kind of worried that it's not gonna match and so the main reason i don't want to paint is because i don't want to take off the fender liner and this drill piece right here and the rocker panel and all that just to paint this fender so i might just risk it and if it doesn't match it's gonna suck. Uh, we've gotta pop these off, of course. I don't know how they come off. I think, just by looking from the inside, I think you have to wedge this rear up just a hair and then push it back and it should pop right out. Not sure, but we're gonna try it and see what happens. Uh, hopefully we don't break them because I'm sure they cost like a million dollars. Yeah, you see, it's, it's definitely, sounds like it's breaking. Dude, this is so weird. I'm definitely about to break this thing if I'm not careful. Okay, so now I see how it comes out. Very intricately. Very intricately, sir. Definitely about to break it. I gotta be so rough on it, Nate. Aha! Very delicate situation. I guarantee if I break one of these, I'm not gonna be eating for a whole week. This one actually came off easier. I guess I have experience. What do you think, Nate? And the other one I may or may not have broke. I mean, I, I the other one's fine. Gorgeous. I do like how that, you know, that's, that's pretty genius the way it goes on there. But, uh, all right, we got that off. Now we're gonna do the guide coat. All right, so guide coat is basically exactly what it sounds. Uh, it's something to guide you as you sand. It basically, as you sand, it sands away and it shows you the imperfection. So we're gonna recycle some of this paper real quick. Just like that. And I see a lot of people, when they use guide coat, they just use regular spray paint and they do this. That's so stupid. There's no reason to do that. You wanna do a nice mist coat that way you don't have to sit there and sand those lines out because essentially these lines right here are going to be a different level of hardness, you know, because paint, the spray paint and the primer are gonna sand down at different 
speeds. You know, your your sand your uh, your paint is going to sand a little bit. It's going to take longer to sand than the primer, so you're going to be sanding these areas out a lot more than versus this, where you're just sanding this entire mist coat layer off at one time. So that's a good tip for you. All right, so we got our guide coat down, and uh, I need to go grab some scuff it paste. We're going to need it for the blending. And so while I go do that, Nate's gonna go ahead and start sanding down the door with a 400 grit. So uh, here is your sandpaper, sir. Yes, sir. So dad pulled us off of the E92 yet again, another Subi. And look, it's so funny. It's like literally the same damage. Uh, but he wants us to give him a hand with the with the outer tie rod here. Got a little bit of an issue. As you guys can see, it's pretty bent. So his main problem is getting this boot off. And I think that we can just simply Yes, sir, look at that. Nothing but a pair of channel locks. And some busted up hands. Probably not a good thing to come over here and work on some greasy vehicle and then go back to sanding, but it's Pops. We gotta do whatever he says. You know, he's the boss, so we gotta help him out. I think he's gonna go get a new tie rod. We'll probably have to help him put it back on as well. See, this is why I never wear gloves, because by the time I put them on, he's already halfway done. Huh? Yeah! Alright, so check it out. We put this uh, body putty on all the rock chips and uh, not very happy with the amount of rock chips that we have here and so I'm thinking that we might have to do a sealer coat on the hood. If we do a sealer coat on the hood we're gonna have a large area here that is going to need to be repainted so we might have you know an issue with the blind. So if this right here will just pop out of there Wow. And all that without spilling a single drop of blood. So I do have this piece. So I need this piece and this piece. It's a fake vent? Are you kidding me here? How is it a fake vent? Oh, it is. <laughs> How is it a fake vent? That's BS. Okay, so we've got everything sanded down and there was a bunch of little spots that we still had to fix like this rock chip here and then there was a few rock chips that I missed like right here 
and then also here i should have been a little bit more attentive to detail but you know they're pretty small so i'm not really worried about them anyways i did putty them because obviously if you see it you got to fix it uh so we'll let this set up real good we'll get it all sanded down get the sucker in the booth and see if we can get it painted today Man, this thing sounds absolutely nasty. Man, I, I love that sound, especially when you rev it up to like 9,000. Uh, but yeah, we got it in the booth and uh, now we need to blow off all the little excess water that didn't get dried up and get the plastic on here. And then I wonder where Paul went, he kind of disappeared on us. So uh, we might have to wait till tomorrow to paint it, which is gonna suck, but it's okay. You know, we need Paul to take his time. We don't want to rush him. And uh, me and Nate are actually behind on this. We should already have this ready and in here. It should have been in the booth taped up this morning. Honestly. Yeah, honestly. We dropped the ball, but it is what it is. We'll take care of it. So we've got the car all cleaned up, all tacked, and Paul is going to go ahead and throw the first coat of sealer. You got my so, roller? Your roller? Yeah. Oh yeah, I have to go get the roller. You want the 12 inch or the 18 inch? Probably get one of each. You know, <laughs> inch the hood and then the... uh, so uh, Paul, explain to us what the sealer is for. Um, so the sealer helps seal any primer or any minor imperfections that you have that we have a nice smooth surface whenever your uh, base coat lays down um, factory comes with sealer a lot of people don't and back in the day when we were first starting out we actually didn't use sealer we would just prime it and then throw base coat over it but that extra sealer is a layer of protection also sealers um, it's flexible so especially on areas like the hood it keeps your paint from just chipping off whenever you get a rock chip you know it makes it kind of malleable especially on the bumpers too um, so it goes a long way to help with the paint job actually lasting. So it's an important step, especially for, you know, when you're, when you're painting the boss's car, you know, you've got to really go all the way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, another thing Mark was telling me about yesterday, you know, the, the, the rep for advance, uh -huh. he was saying like areas where you can see the three different colors here. We've got base coat, we've got a door and then primer. So when you seal all that, you get one uniform base yeah it, it definitely helps with coverage whenever you go to spray your base coat you're not going to have to work so say for instance this is a darker door it might take a lot more paint to cover that dark paint versus the fender that's already somewhat blue right. so once you get it all one color then you're putting the same amount of layers of base coat on all the panels versus having to spray more paint here and not necessarily needing as much on yeah the, say for instance and i feel like the sealer actually accepts the base coat a little bit better than just like sanded primer or paint yeah, uh, it, it helps, especially with edges of your primer. Um, oftentimes, your primer is, is smoother than the rest of your, your paint. Say, for instance, this paint right here, you know, it hasn't been touched. So you can sometimes, I've, I've seen this on cars where you can see the outline of the primer, um, where if you take sealer and you stretch it out across that border, then uh, there's no chance that you'll ever see that. And it'll never shrink or bleed through or any of that. So. Yes, that's sir. really the right way to do it um the only downside to having an extra step an extra wet base or wet product is um you run the chance of you know a little bit more trash and stuff like that but you can always buff it out yeah all right well let's get to it
Okay, so the camera was full on storage in the middle of us spraying this sealer. Uh, by the time I went and had Nate delete it, Paul already finished it, but that's okay. It's a boring part of the process. It's looking really good. I'm very happy with how thorough he was with this sealer because, you know, a lot of, like he said, a lot of people don't even use this sealer. So it's looking really good. It looks like we're ready for base coat. Uh, we're going to let this set up. And in the meantime, I'm going to go uh, show you guys some interesting things we got going on around the shop. All right, so we got V-Tune in the house. Nate has been cutting him a special tool that he can use on the Goon Squad's Porsche. And basically this is just a template of the front frame rail and it's got a little extension here with a hole. And so he'll be able to bolt this onto the end of the frame rail and pull it down. So that's really cool. And over here we got the big boss with another Subaru that I'm going to have to weld. Again, same spot, same deal, same car. A frame rail puller all nice and done right here. And you can see the first cut right here didn't have the actual hooking attachment, which this is actually gonna get bolted on first, just like that, and it's gonna get bolted on, and then a hook can simply go in there and pull that frame rail perfectly down. Now that we're done with that, we need to build the shock tower uh, puller, which was Nate doing right now. And man, that looks pretty good right there. So what do you, oh, you just wanna? Yeah, so, uh, so basically- You gonna put a clamp? Yeah, so basically we need it to come like this, like this, and like this. Just don't put no holes or anything in it. Boss, how's he doing? Good. Good? All right, so uh, Ben's got to go. He's got an appointment with Goon Squad, so I'm going to go ahead and weld it up. He's got it all. Dad. Weld it. How's it look, you? Man, it looks, let me tell you something about Paul. Paul is the top G. Top G, for sure. Yeah, it looking good. This is the first coat of base, uh, so, you know, it's still going to need another heavy coat, but so far, so good, man. I'm super excited. It's looking really good, and here he is with the more base coat. What do you think, we have enough? I think so. I think we're gonna have just enough. The first coat was a lot wetter, you know, the second one, I want to be as heavy with it. Gotcha.
Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. That's the first coat of clear. Everything is looking beautiful. We've got the mirror painted as well here. Man, it's looking good, sir. Very nice. Good job. Uh, good job. Can you turn the AC on? Yeah. Uh, oh, man. I'm going to hit something before I get out of here. Man, this thing is looking good. So one more coat and we're good, right? Yeah. Nice. All right, so we got the first coat of clear down and uh, we're gonna let that set up. In the meantime, we're gonna run the second plate. Uh, ben actually needed another plate for the Porsche over at Goon Squads. It's a beautiful place you got here, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, sir, what y'all got cooked you got up? food, you guys hungry? No, we actually yeah, we just, just ate. ate. Oh, perfect. I appreciate it though. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. We're just having a little bite to eat. Heck, Heck yeah. yeah, bro. What's, What's up, up, bro? What's up? Man, let's check out this shop. Go for it. You guys are one of the first to see this place. Dang. Although we're not finished 100%, you know. We're just using it already. You got to. Yeah, You got first. a roof over your head, you put it to work. Heck yeah, man. Man, I like that lift. That's nice. Oh, that triple stacker, man. Looks like what? a CNN GTA or something. Dude. That's what I'm or saying. Fast and Furious. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. GTA Online. <laughs> right, which one? Which place did you cut? This one. That's the wrong one, Nate. Are you Wait, serious? did you? I, I said, I said, cut one of these. You sent me a picture. <laughs> oh wow! You sent me a picture of that one. Cut read, the wrong read, one. Oh, you cut that read, one. Read my text. Hey, that's not a problem though. We can just go back. Yeah, and we cut just it. make another one. But you needed that one though, right? Yeah, because see, we had to make sure that our product was going to good use before we cut another. Before you described it. That's a sick car. Nice. Yeah, that's a sick frame machine. And then you got all these little pulling yeah. units and connect them all at once. Oh, that's sick. Whenever you're pulling, the reason why I thought the ball is you can literally yeah. set it any way. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's what I like about them. They're really simple to set up. How you can pull. And he literally pulls box fans, or you know those big vans, like yeah. roofs out and stuff. Yeah, I know. I've seen the? that. They, they first, like all the first videos about this frame, they were only doing trucks. Like nobody really did cars with them. I didn't see any cars being done. It's, it's like Isuzu's and like bigger vans but that's awesome yeah we're definitely gonna have to get one like this dang son look at all them trucks all right so uh nate had a little miscommunication and instead of cutting a top hat he cut a frame rail thing my bobber Dang sauce. Ooh, dang. Yeah, I'm gonna get a couple of these dang yeah, sauces. Yeah, this right here is like the best sauce that I've had. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, dude. It took a long time to put it together, but hey. it was worth it, man. All right, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Take care. All right, All right. Right. Yep. Peace out. Be safe out there. That's right. We, we They've been robbed. It. They've been robbed. It. Hey, right, so. We got the car painted and now we are finally ready to untape it. Super excited. I'm gonna go ahead and rip all this plastic off. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate on this bumper, but you know what? It is what it is. Turned out really good though. Yeah, guess guess what kind of hate I'm gonna get on the bumper. Why don't you guys guess what kind of hate I'm gonna get on the bumper? <laughs> I mean, honestly, if I seen somebody else do it like this, I I would probably be like, oh, you did it wrong. Dude, that's a perfect but we burning. Can't, we can't all be perfect. All 
All right, so we got the car into the shop. Mark needed the paint booth, so we had to hurry up and get it in here. And good thing we got it in here before it started raining, because it's really coming down out there. And this thing is super fresh, and it looks super good, too. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Man, you guys don't even know how excited I am. Uh, it needs a little buffing here and there, but that's how it is. You know, paint jobs are always like that. You can never get them too perfect. But the color match is really nice. Everything went very smoothly. Uh, we had a little mishap with the front bumper, but that's no big deal. We're not even gonna show you guys. <laughs> uh, it, it may have fell down, but we're not gonna name any names. It wasn't Nate, so we're good. Uh, but yeah, so uh, tomorrow we are going to probably get back on the Mustang because uh, I'd like for this to set up real good. Oh, we'll, you know what we will do, Nate? We'll pop that window in. Yeah, that rear glass. window. That way she's going to be dried in. Then I can leave it outside. Uh, right now we don't have that window. I don't really like parking outside and having to tape it and stuff. So we'll pop that window in and then we'll get the Mustang ready for paint. I know you guys are super excited about getting that thing done. Uh, it basically needs just a little bit more body work and then ready to paint, which is gonna be super exciting, especially for Mike. I know Mike really wants that car back. And uh, also I'd like to show you guys another little venture that Nate is in charge of. Uh, as you guys know, we did get the CNC machine going. Huge thank you to Arc One CNC. Uh, they sent out the best guy they had and he hooked us up. You know, he showed us how to use it. He showed us how to solve issues, how to, you know, put it from paper onto metal, like the whole entire process. Nate's got that down. He's just cutting stuff out. And that's what I want to show you guys. We have a little venture. Maybe some of you guys might be interested. Maybe not. I don't know, but check it out. Right here is what we call the Firebox Mini. And it's basically just a little Firebox grill. It's really cool. I'm going to show you guys how it works. So basically you put your coals down in here, obviously you light them up, and you could keep this off and put shish kebabs on here, or you could pop the little grill on and you know cook your burgers or your hot dogs or whatever it is that you wanna cook out there. Now it is small, this, is, this particular one is made for camping, and uh, we can make them bigger if you'd like it like to be just set up on your little porch or pad or wherever at the house. But what's really cool about this grill is check this out. So, when you take this grill apart, so once you take it apart, you'll lay this piece down here, you'll lay this one right here, you'll line them holes up right there. Line, I usually put this one in the middle, it just makes it a little bit more uniform. And then this one lays on top, just like that, and we'll provide bolts to keep this together. Or, you know, you can hang it on pegs in your house or anything. It's like a little suitcase, look at that. You can just pick it up and carry it with you. Or, you know, you can have it in the back of the truck or in the boat or in the RV, anywhere you want. And the coolest part about it is we can scale it to any size that you want. So if you guys want to, you know, maybe grab one of these, uh, hit up firegrills.com. We'll drop a link in the description below and we'll also we'll pop it up on the screen for you right here but it's really cool and also it helps to support Nate's future projects, which he has a lot of good ideas and uh, you know, we, ha we need means to get to where we wanna be. So we wanna start out with something small. We made this really small. A lot of people have already liked it. We've already sold out of all the ones that we've made and uh, we can definitely offer you guys uh, custom designs maybe you want your name in there or maybe you want 23rd garage in there or maybe you just don't want anything there at all we can put whatever you want on there so check it out and let us know what you think of it this is our first product that we have made in-house here and uh, we're really excited to see what you guys think so let us know in the comment section below if this is something that you would like and uh, let us know if you think it's a good idea for us to keep pushing forward with it and uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, hit that like button. And also, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. It keeps us motivated. Keep bringing you guys content. And also check us out on Instagram at 23rd underscore garage. garage dot, no, not dot com, this <laughs> is Instagram. 23rd underscore garage. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.